Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. And today I'm going to show you how to paint part two of our Morgan Le Fay. John, do you have that picture in picture? I do. Thank you. So you see that right there? That's what we're going to be working towards. We've already done the background. We've already put in the back foliage. And now we're going to start resolving our central figure a little bit more today. We're going to hang in for about 40 minutes. And we plan a meeting again this week. We do this in segments like this because it allows you to digest the material kind of focus on that part of the painting that you're working on and not feeling so rushed in the creative project process. This is part of the big art quest, which is a year long series where we look at different focus things in art and try to really demystify them and make them more accessible. Um, this one has gone on for two years. So <laughs> we got a, we got a little bit behind, but now we're catching up. It looks like we're going to wrap up and resolve really, really well. I'm ready to get into it on the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He is the captain of the ship. He's going to control your experience by making sure you get to see everything that I'm doing. Uh, he will try to filter questions that come to him that are related to the painting. Remember to put those in all caps so that the moderators, which actually say moderator on their little thing, can make sure that he gets that. Sometimes they'll answer that question for you because very often I've already covered a concept or a topic really thoroughly and they might know the link or video that has the answer for you. <sighs> How you guys been? It's been a minute since we've been here. I'm going to sip my yeah. coffee. No, this is exciting. Everyone's ready to be back here. This mm -hmm. has been, we're, we're doing some BAQing. We're BAQing. Yeah. Back. Back. We're back. <laughs> now, so, you're, we're, we're doing this. You've got a series of girls that you've been working on here. At the yeah, there, there's 12 in total. Each month we focused on a different theme that kind of related to that month to a different fairy tale. Um, pretty much all the fairy tales were really kind of folklore fairy tales, like really old world fairy tales, which was a lot of fun. And then we tried to revisit these women, and they're all women, in, in kind of a very positive modern light. So it's really interesting to see that filter happen. Um, we are never, ever really necessarily uh, beholden to the reference photo. Creativity may change things at any time. You just never know. Because I'll get the need and be like, we got to have this here and we'll change it up. So that's kind of a fun part of this. We really drill, in, drill down in those concepts and get together on that process. Today, I think we're going to, actually, I'm sure we have to put in the cup in at least most of the skin tone so that we can layer the dress on top of that. And then finally, eventually the smoke. So that's another thing we cover is like how you would break a painting down. Like what are the layers? I think that's one of the best parts of the series that it has as you paint each girl you get a really more in-depth sense of how paintings are constructed and how the layers, especially in acrylic paint, move forward. Yeah. I feel so sassy today. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit excited, guys. you got to bear with me. We are uh, planning this big event, and we just got some more good news about it. <laughs> and so Don and I were like, we wanted to jump up and down and like have a big celebratory lunch, but we're like, we got to teach the quest first. So. So, well, We're like them. excited kindergartners today. Bear with me. Let's get just jump right on in. You should tell them over what these are. Okay. So today for uh, the project, I put out these colors. I put out Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Titanium White, Quinacridone Magenta, Alizarin Crimson, a Zinc White, Indian Yellow, and a Thalo Green. The reason I did this is I want to create a glowing cup, and I can't paint her fingers over the cup really till I get the cup in. So that's like the first thing that I've got to kind of address today. And I'm going to be using these colors to hopefully create a luminous, beautiful glass, right? It also feels like it's filled with magic. I'm going to grab a small brush. You grab a small brush that you have in your life. This is a weird brush. This is a filbert grass comb. A uh, little tiny detail, one eighth by Ruby Satin. And I'm going to just start with this really simply because it's small and I feel like it'll work the space really well. And that's all that was happening. So I'm going to just at first kind of put the glass in with this green. Make sure that I am avoiding... You know, even though I kind of have so much smoke, the back end almost doesn't matter, mm. to be real honest, because there's going to be so much. But I'm just coming in and working in the goblet. It's really more of a goblet. I think if you have magical powers, it's a goblet. Isn't that pretty much a rule? Mm. 
Magical yeah. powers is goblet. I guess, yeah. I it's, like the way she's holding the goblet. You, you, you could have, it's goblet, chalice, cup, mm, mug. Ne she would never carry a mug. But a dwarf would. So the reason I'm liking this tool, if you're wondering, like, why did she pick that? This actually does make very nice grass and detail stuff, but it's a very sharp precision brush. So if I want to get real crisp lines and have a lot of control, it also allows me to do that. And it blends really nicely. <laughs> I'm going to just wipe it off with my towel and go ahead and get a little black. And come here and add some dark, even darker value to some spots. Because often in glass, what we're painting is the shadows as much as the highlights. So I'm putting one right here, kind of around the base. I'll go ahead and imply some a little bit at these edges. And when we come in with highlights, it goes, whoa, that's amazing. So that's doing pretty well. Now, if I take a little of my Indian yellow into my green, you're going to see it creates a very unique green gold color. I may have you scoot your uh, painting over. My painting? You didn't have it centered. I didn't because I had, I had it for the announcement positioning and then changed up. I'm going to definitely, I need this to glow a bit. So we're going to start putting in the, the value that glows. Now I'm going to keep it dark down there and at the edges. And I'm letting everything blend on the canvas as you do or you can do. Let's put a little bit down the stem. And we'll put some over here on the left hand side, kind of like this little highlight. So we're getting some values on our glass. I'm doing a, I like a little blending and brush stippling in, which you can see this does really, really well. Now, skin tone. I'm going to do a light skin tone for her. Um, I'm probably, I put out alizarin and quinacridone, but I'm probably going to work the alizarin a little bit more in the mix. So I'm going to take my artist knife, which is a little covered with paint from last night, and pull out my yellow and a nice bit of my alizarin. And I make what's a master mix, right? This is the, the basis of my uh, skin tone. Now, I include in the description, guys, if you look down below, way, way, way down the description, there's 50,000 words there, and I use all of them. <laughs> um, you're going to see a book with skin tone recipes. I highly recommend that book. I think, <laughs> I think we, like, literally brought that book out of retirement. You can see it's about two parts of alizarin yep. to one part um, yellow ochre, what we're working with. I'm going to zoom in on her since you're going to work on skin tone. Yeah, zoom. I'm going to start on the face. Start on the face. Yep. I'm going to start with my darkest value, interestingly enough, of skin tone unmixed with any white. Oh, hold on so a second. This is my darkest value. Oh, hold on a second. I was... I was Looking at something else. Trying to get the picture and picture sized up for you. Oh, thank you. I love when I, I always am sad when I have to leave behind my wonderful little face sketches. They're really some of my favorites. So here's this base. All right, that's a deep, deep value. Doesn't have any white mixed into it yet. And we'll just come here and do shoulders and neck. Now, try not to lose where your chin ends and your neck begins. And in some sense, the purple underpainting is really helpful here. Because these paints can be a little bit transparent. So therefore, they give you a little bit of forgiveness in getting that first layer in. We're going to definitely be using some glazing medium today and transparent pigments also to help us, you know, maybe level up some of our skin tone skills mm. as you do. Sort of blending into her background right now, isn't she? Well, you got to get the, 
that the redder undertones there. You really need to start, yeah, getting those in early, and then you can always. lighten and add layers and this just helps you build those values up i like that right there now i've got my little fingers here we don't really see her thumb we just see these fingers wherever her thumb is it's out of view and I don't mind that. Just putting it out there. I love it. So I'm so super excited. John and I were just like, we were just like, we had to talk and we're like, we're talking and we're like, oh, we gotta, we gotta definitely go live. I'm super pumped, babe. Well, good. You're amazing. All right, up this little arm here. I'm so glad you guys are liking these. If we, uh, hard not to want to just keep doing them because I just enjoy these fairy tales. Very, very much, you know? Mm-hmm. There's a little pointed finger. Here's the hand with downward pointed fingers. Kind of painting that out a bit. I think that's looking pretty, pretty good. Yeah. I like it. I'm gonna hit this with a hair dryer real quick because I just sort of want this to be a color that everything shows through and I want to start lifting this. So I'm gonna hit it with a hair dryer. Okay. I, I'm unplugged. Oh, I think I tripped over it. Did you? And you were like, that's, I will unplug it. That's it's what I have earlier. Thing. As, I, as I tripped over it earlier. Oh, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to come over here. I will work it out. It's probably, I think it's just tacky enough. So <laughs> tacky. My artwork's so tacky. Woohoo. I'm going to get a little bit more of my Indian yellow onto this small brush. And I'm going to bring it into here. And we're going to just really tap some yellow right there and around the fingers. Down the stem a bit. And again, a little bit right here at the base. Right there at the base. I'm going to wipe off and I'm going to get some white. Definitely the yellow. And around the goblet of fire of fire just saying it's a goblet of fire maybe just the yellow i don't i haven't know. added any fire to it though babe but it i mean i'm it going is to intrinsically... just brush out a little bit of this and i don't even think i want it in the um with the white uh, on the outside I'm going to just take a damp brush and watch this. I'm going to erase. <laughs> I love that you can erase in acrylic. Sometimes we forget we can do that. Like until the paint's dry, there's a lot of do-over room. A lot of do-over room. Back into my just Indian yellow. If you don't have Indian yellow and you're painting the project, just use, you know, cad yellow and a little glazing medium so it's more transparent. It'll be a little more luminous and saturated than this, but it's not going to hurt the overall look of the painting. And we definitely want to give the sense that this is a glow. Now we did that nice little a glow pattern. Mm -hmm. It is a glow. Now, while my hands are here, I'm going to go ahead and get a little more of my yellow ochre out. Take a smidge of my master skin tone mix. And then my titanium white. And you can see that it's very easy for me to get to those lighter 
values for skin tones from here. I'm not really working at it. I'm going to paint in a couple of the fingers. You know, you could can always get a little of my quinacridone in there if I want to pink up the fingertips, which often actually looks pretty cool. This could totally be like a grown-up Hermione. It could be a grown-up Hermione. Was She's that like, suggested? Somebody's like, it's Hermione, but grown up. I may even switch to a more pointed detail brush. No, I was just thinking like, you know, because it's the Goblet of Fire. got me thinking this could be, this could be <laughs> Hermione and the Goblet of Fire. Well, let's be honest. It would have been a much shorter series if Hermione was in charge. <laughs> it would have just been like. She would have been like, that's it for Voldemort. <laughs> Double tap. Let's get this thing over with. He was with. all worried about the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. I mean, and didn't you also feel that Mrs. McGonag McGonagall was like capable of some like really crazy throwdown stuff? Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just like, why didn't somebody just let her just take care of things? I've, I don't know. I have a, I have a sleep, sneaking suspicion school would have been on Monday morning, and you know, there would have been. Uh... So I used some black to create kind of a darker version of skin tone. So here, as the fingers go back we can um, add that value. You can keep going on about Hermione. I just want to let them know I'm putting this dark skin value right here as the fingers bend using a small detail. This is my number one art sharp around. These are available all over. Um, I even have affiliate codes for almost every country now. So you guys can get some discounts. I'll have to post those. And you can get them at Michael's online with the coupon if they got one going all of which is fine does not hurt me you have not hurt me if you use a coupon yep at all in fact you helped me because then people are like oh these do well yeah i'm just saying that, you know mcgonagall would have taken care of things between school hours making sure that students didn't know what was up yeah I, I think that's probably actually fairly accurate <laughs> Grabbing some just quinacridone and kind of exaggerating some things about the fingers. As you do, maybe right here at the knuckles, a little pink. And again, you can just easily get your base skin tone. Even with a small brush. And that's why I like working a master mix and then pulling it back. A little bit of water, one drop. Don't tip the brush deep, otherwise you'll get that weird, I don't know if you've ever had the experience where there's this weird drop that hides in the brush hmm. and then comes down. It's hiding in its belly. It's hiding in the belly of the brush. In my belly, got the paint in my belly. Doing something. <sighs> the blending is such a thing, especially in tiny spots like this. You've just gotta be patient. Give yourself a minute to work it. And again, it can be hard to get the flow to work the way you want. Now, I'm going to get my little black. Much of these fingers, I know I'm being fussy, and it's kind of silly because a lot of the finger will be uh, covered by smoke and things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's in the details. Looks crazy right now. You know what you do when your hand looks crazy? Put smoke in front of it? Well, there's that option. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely that option. No, 
the the goblet's between her in ring and index finger, yeah? Yeah. She's, she's kinda holding, holding it that way. Two fingers on each side. Kind of Vulcan style. She's Vulcan styling her cup. Which is gonna have a ton of smoke. So I do want to get the hand in there, but I also have to remember I'm gonna get some actually get some zinc while I'll show you a little trick. I'm gonna get some just zinc. And on the tip of her fingers, I'm gonna add a little kind of like nail. It's just that zinc white. And I can get a little of the quinacridone and the zinc. And that will help me pink it all up. There you go. We got him in. Crazy looking, but we got him in. Now, once you have the fingers in, I'm going to come back again with some of my yellow. And I'm going to come right here. And we're going to do some stronger second layer of Indian yellow. And even right here. So you can see it kind of, they're peeking out. And then I'm going to just add a bit of that reflection to the fingers. So there's a bit of the yellow on the fingers. A little more of the white, the tint white, the zinc white. I'll come right here. And just making sure that that's there. More yellow. This is why I like doing these classes just a little bit like slower and kind of see how it goes in. John's going to zoom in and I'll grab a screenshot of that for y'all later when you're like, what was that? Yes, that's what that was. Now, for balance, looking at it. What screenshot are you getting? I'm going to get one of the hand up close. Oh, you're you're going to take one with your, with your camera? Your well, I don't have my camera with me, so I guess I, gra I figured I'd grab it from the video. I'm going to kind oh. of imply her thumb right here. In the smoke, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that'll help our little minds go, oh, there's a thing there. There's a thing, and that's fantastic. When it's all done, the big trick will be we're going to get some white onto the small brush. And we're going to come on the outside edge here and make some high reflections and along the and it's down. So that's how we're getting it to look like a goblet and glass. A little bit right there. So see, it's all really reflecty, glowy, interesting. Crazy, but also cool. All right. Now, for her other features, we're going to kind of shape out her face a bit and everything, which I really, really like. I'm going to take a little bit of my master mix and again, a little more yellow ochre and start to create the lighter values for her skin tone. And I may this time get some glaze in there. I want to improve the blendability and do this in layers. The glaze can help me do that. If I want to grab a little of the quinacridone then with some glaze and come right here and pink up a shoulder. It's really amazing what you can do. So you are very set. And then if you want to blend back into the deeper skin tones, you just pick up a little bit and come on this little inside face. And you can start to talk about 
those values. If you need to, you can always come in for the shadow. A little black blending it in there. And the glaze will really help you get that done. So I'm just putting glazy medium into my brush. You can see it just helps me blend everything out. It's my friend that way. I love painting on Thursdays. Those are my happy painting days. Hmm. Yeah? Yes. Yes. And again, a little bit of the black in that. And then there's this really fun sort of strong shadow down her arm I don't want to lose. It'll be important later. Bring it down the inside of the arm. We're going to definitely hold that for a minute. It's also, interestingly enough, under the chin. So sometimes I find I like to get it in now. And then I can blend it right up to there as needed. Just dried off my brush and always soften at this stage any of my brush stroke See what I'm doing kind of tapping the brush up and down and softening that blend creates a bit of an improvement We're just adding white it's a lot more white than you think A lot more white than you'd think. A little bit of water. Always get a little more yellow ochre into it. And what that does is that would warm it up. And I'm taking the skin tone much deeper than needed or her dress. If you're like, that's like a lot darker than you need. Yeah, I know. That's because, I mean, deeper than you need, that's because we want to leave room when we're doing the dress. We come up in the neck. I've used glazing medium, guys. That's what I'm doing. I'm using that glazing medium to help make my paint a little more transparent. And to help me blend where it can be harder to blend. Layer one. Not too different from player one. Just pulling that base in. A little bit of more red mix right there. I think right here I'm going to. Go ahead and dust a little of the more red mix. Maybe a little bit at the shoulder too. So what I'm trying to do is rose up those those points. As you do. And then add a little more white. And because there's so many little blends and adjustments that we do when we're doing skin tones, that's why I like to have a master mix just set aside. So I have fiddly room. Hmm. Do we have any questions today, Mr. Cooney? I oh. know I haven't been chatting as much to everybody as I usually do. Well, the, there was 
Luckily, our, our moderators are on point today. They are, man. They, they are, are on point people. They are moderators on the link. They're but on the link. They're all on the link. Um, so there was some questions about skin tone, skin tone questions. We've got, and I'll just mention it, we've got a bunch, bunch, bunch of videos on the website that talk about skin tone, skin tone's options. You've got a link in the description down below for books about skin tones. So yeah. if you would like another skin tone, we have some info on it. And we don't mind. And there's a lot of different ones. There is. There is. If it's 400 recipes of skin tones, that should give you some idea of how much diversity in skin tone <laughs> we actually deal with as a species, right? And that's important to think about. I'm just, sometimes I'm adding like the grayed out kind of color to definitely bridge the shading that we have there. I like to just fuss around with all those, getting back into the black and the pink. So this particular part of the Big Art Quest is probably all, everything is really in the three hoot range. And, and, and frankly, sometimes I would like to say it's beyond the hoot. We're no longer really doing hoot as much as we are doing just painting and working those skills we've been learning with each other out on the canvas. Trying to make sure I got a little elbow crease going in here. And a little bit of shadow under where the fingers will be and then here in the palm of the hand. Even though I know we'll be lightening it up in a minute. There we go. You can always just pink it up, lighten it up, change it as you need. This part of a piece is always, like for me, a lot of work. Yeah. A little highlights there. And if your paint is dry, how you blend is you go into your glazing medium. And then you can always use it to sort of transition everything out. Creating much softer transitions from one aspect to another. So that the values are a little more in keeping with what you would expect. A little bit of the black into my skin tone mix. Mm. Just to capture that shadow that's against there. Got to deal with this hand, but I want to wait on that for a second. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of my light skin tone and I'm going to do a little thing, which is I'm going to come in and be like, make my center line and say, here's my eye line. Here's my nose line. And that's where my mouth has got to be. So I know where I'm putting things. I'm taking a little black over to my lighter skin tone. And I'm going to put this closer to me. Eyes are generally much smaller than you think. I have a tendency to want to enlarge them. Not all the way to say like a keen eye, but still a little bit bigger than what is. So 
it's always an interesting journey for me to keep them in more realistic scale. But what you want to know is your eyes, right, are placed on this line. So if you divide your face in half, that's your eye line. Your ears, the top of the ear before it arcs up is where the glasses would sit. We'll end up also like if, if you were going to see an ear, it would be like right there. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. You can always find the placement of those objects if you anchor them with each other. And there's always about an eye's distance between each eye across the bridge of the nose. So I'm intentionally using an off-white to paint in her eyes. The reason being is that I need room to highlight and do things. All right. And then she's got a nose that comes down sort of like this. I'm going to be sketching and paint, so bear with me. In the bridge. Got a nice little kind of curve in on her bridge. And above the eye, a little, again, curve in on that bridge. And then her nose definitely takes a turn up. I'm just giving myself that structure to start with, if that makes sense to everybody. Yeah. So I'll take my dark color and I'll get it into my skin tones that I've got going on. And just deepening up that skin tone for the shadow. There we go. That's a nice shadow skin tone. And I will... Make sure that I've got good shadows there and also really underneath here. The nose will look whack for a minute. Don't panic. There's just no need. Helps nothing. I like to bring my shadow down a little bit. I'm going to come and get a lighter skin tone. There's still too much black in my brush. One of the things about the detail brushes that you've always got to watch is that they want to hold on to paint. It's hard to get them vigorously cleaned out. What you're doing right here is just the beginning of this process. I use some blending medium to blending medium to help improve the flow of my paint off my brush. I'm going to highlight a nostril here. This is again just the beginning of what I'm seeing on my nose, but I got to get those basic highlights and shapes. All right. So I might take some of my burnt sienna and some of my Master Skin Tone Mix. I'm going to come up over the eye a bit with this darker value. Right? Up over the eye a bit. Get my smaller brush, my number two. I'll work out a little bit of my highlighted skin tone mix. The other thing I like about the blending medium is it prevents your paint from drying out so, so, so fast. That one right there. And that's very, very helpful. Just coming here. I let her ear tuck out a bit.
going to get the lower values of her face before I put in the lips too much. Now, if I'm over on the far side, I'm going to add a bit of my brown and my black because this side of the face is a little bit more in shadow. It's a subtle difference, but they are ones we want to start representing. Get some of my lighter values right here. I'm around here. So basically what we're starting to say, even though we're saying it very roughly, is that this side of the face has a little more light on it than over here on the other side of the face. And I just want you to look that it looks crazy right now. That is normal. <laughs> get into my skin tones for the fingers but again don't make yourself miserable with this because there's a lot of smoke that's going to be going over it so you know be aware you're not under as much pressure as you might be feeling that you are i hear vigorous typing <laughs> some notes i'm taking are you taking notes yep i have i have had uh, a great conversation with little Sherpet as a sidebar. Uh, Sherpazoid, Sherp, Sherpanista. Sherpanista, Sherpazoid, Sherpet, whatever you feel, it all works out. You could be a Sherpanator. You could be a Sherpanator. You you be your style of, of Sherpa fan. I'm here to Sherp you up. <laughs> yeah, so if every, you know, if you felt that when you heard John say that, maybe that's that's your call sign, right? I am just lightly brushing over that darker value. You can see that's allowing that to sort of happen there. A little water. Now, this is always interesting to get the little fingies in. Always interesting. That's another little thingy. Now, are, are we thinking about heading back to Tennessee anytime soon? Not on the plans, though we do think Pigeon Forge is awesome. And, and there's, you never know, because there could be a store opening or a, yeah. partner that we could go out and visit with yeah and if that comes up whenever an opportunity for me to come up and see you guys comes up i try to say yes and i try to say yes to as many of those that are free as possible yes all right we do have the kind of little retreat thing coming up i'm going to trim back my finger here to do that i'm going to use my a little more alizarin crimson i think and some diox purple that i have tucked to the side Because her pointy finger got way weird long. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited with it. Uh, just giving you a heads up here about that 45-minute mark. All right. Well, you know, we're good, and we got some stuff in. Oh, no, I just wanted to make sure you knew before you got... Uh... Too far? Yeah. I know you can get all this stuff worked in, no problem. But... Yeah, no, we got a I... lot to do. I'm here. I'm going to just use the purple. <laughs> I would definitely convenient. use the purples. It's just super convenient. It's like, it's right there, yo. Now I'm into it. Now I'm going to take this alizarin and this purple, and I'm going to even come kind of underneath here. I think that's a great, great color to help imply some shadow with. See what I'm doing? Yeah. That's pretty cool. I'm enjoying that. Sometimes you'll be painting along and you're like, this is awesome. I love this. And it feels amazing on the painting. And so you go ahead and 
use it. I'm just using a glaze of it. Where I might be, you know, perhaps dealing with a bit more of a shadow with that. I like that. Let's take uh, maybe 15 minutes and work on the face a little bit more. That way we have just the dress and whatever is still not resolved. I, you know. Is it okay? Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I was just reading a comment. Oh. And Angela says that pinky up is a winch, witch signal. Ah. I don't I don't know which signals. Yeah, I'm not up on that, but I, I know the she's one, Morgane, so whatever she does is a witch signal. I, I know the one from Bewitched, and that's where you wiggle your nose. Yeah, I don't think that's an official. That's I don't know. I, I know I recognize all witches by the wit nose wiggle. That's like So everybody with allergies, witch in John's book. That there she's a witch. To quote a popular movie. What was the popular movie? Monty Python and Quest for the Holy Grail. Oh, sorry. Kicked out of the nerd club now. <laughs> Silly mistake. It's okay. It's they, There's not very many modern movies that go around accusing people of being a witch. You know, it's kind of frowned upon. But when done in the context of, say, dry British humor, it still holds its own. Yes, I agree. Well, you know, it's a, it's a definitely a way of seeing the world, isn't it? That's all we do as human beings and artists is we come up with ways to see our world. Your only job is to find out how you see your world and embrace that and accept if others see it differently. That's okay, too. I'm really digging this purple. I can't, I can't stop myself. I'm going to come back and do something, but I just really like it. It feels very interesting and mystical and fascinating. I'm just improving the edges around the figure. And then where that purple's out, then I can come back with some alizarin and sort of blend that out into what we already have here. That's how, like, if I've got to make some changes, how I kind of integrate those line changes into a design. You know, and hey, I can come back and, like, alizarin into my little glowy smoke. Who doesn't like that? I don't know. They'll write me if they don't. <laughs> So are we all discussing Monty Python now? Because, like, once you invoke the grail, there's just nothing. <laughs> That's where all conversations go. That should be the it's, other version of Godwin's Law. Once the true. grail is invoked. It has, it has um, I would say, broken down into just quotes from, from Monty Python. Yes. With the coming <laughs> use of turnips. So I've taken a little bit of my base skin tone and mixed some of my quinacridone into it. I'm going to come over here and get a little of my ochre. It's really nice. And I'm going to get uh, whatever I can grab of my zinc, tinting white, whatever you have is just fine. And like I said, we're going to go to the hour like we usually do, and then it ends where it ends. And I will post the picture of the stage so you can get it there. This one is, you know, at its own journey. Do those stages. So. Lindsay would like to Hi, know. Hi, Lindsay. What is modeling paste used for? Modeling paste is used to, there's a couple kinds. So there's, um, modeling paste is an additive to your acrylic paint that allows you to build up incredibly thick layers. You can pipe it out of frosting tips. You can almost sculpt with it. But how modeling paste is different is that it is um, flexible. So you can do it on a canvas, you can do it on stuff and it won't just crack and fall off. So it's a product that's specially designed. A lot of people will be like, oh, you can, you can totally dupe it, just put some sand in your acrylic paint. 
you can put sand in acrylic paint and that does give you a texture but the whole thing about the modeling paste is just that it won't craze which is cracking it won't like peel off which can happen on flexible surfaces and it's made for your products and there are some good varieties in many price points yeah yeah and who doesn't like that i don't know they don't speak to me whoever doesn't like that <laughs> Coming here and creating a sense of value on half the face. There are other planes of light and shadow, but right now we're just exaggerating the two major ones. Using my zinc here to soften my chin shadow I had going on. People often forget you can do that. You can soften what you've got if you need to using that. And come back in with just a little bit of glaze and continue to define those spaces. See how we're doing? So just working out half the face being kind of more in light and half the face being kind of more in shadow. Right now she looks like one of the nurses from uh, Silent Hill, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the Silent Hill stage. What stage of the painting are you in? Silent Hill stage? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's something John has actually had to hear like our whole marriage. Where are you at? Silent Hill. No comments from the peanut gallery till we leave Silent Hill. That's a video game reference and not an important bit of urgent art information, so don't panic. You can see I'm mixing some lighter values in my skin tone, which I really love to do. A little highlight here at the bicep, I think might be nice. And perhaps another one right here. Looking good, looking good. And again, there's this wonderful bit of smoke going everywhere, so we are super not under pressure. And that's the other thing that makes that really a wonderful thing. I'm gonna wipe off my paint. And all that means is that I wipe off the excess so I have the most of the paint loaded on the tip, and I'm gonna continue to create highlights. I'm gonna create a little highlight here on the forehead. See highlighting? Highlighting on the forehead. And sometimes it's good to see a face in this stage because if you can't get here, it's really hard to get to that final stage. If that makes sense. Yes. And I'm going to come in and definitely get a little more highlight up the bridge. And it's crazy how, like, it really starts to happen when it starts to happen. It really starts to happen when it starts to happen. Loading up my smallest brush. I'm going to come here and definitely put in a little touch that is the flared nostril and another little touch. And then come across here. See how that starts to shape out that nose? You know, and then we can get still always get back into the shadow color of the skin quite easily. So I pull it into the glaze and come under the nostril and up. Is my friend. I'm 
And then I'm going to come here and just a little bit of this. And maybe the purple because I really enjoyed that last time. <laughs> Using that in the shadows, especially in this painting, has been really enjoyable for me. I'm just creating a shadow around those nostrils. See how that starts to take form? Boom, there's a nose. Whoop, there's a nose. Whoop, there's a nose. Mm -hmm. I like the nose. I like the nose. Touching very gently, just small bits of color. Making little micro movements in it. If I need to soften anything, you just come here with the glaze. And look, you just soften it. Easily enough, come back with a light color. No trouble, come back with a light color. Blend it out just a little bit. Like that. If you back up, you'd be like, there's a nose there! <laughs> yes! Yes, there is. I'm going to get a little black. Right there. Now, that's a hard one to do because if you overdo it, it, it just looks crazy. So be prepared to soften and adjust it at deep, deep value. And on your lips, I'm going to take a little bit of my purple and my alizarin. We are going to, so right here under the nose, that's where the divot of the lip has to be. Has to be. Bring a little lip down here. A little bit, a little bit up there. Curve that back a bit. And the bottom part of it will be a lot more um, of the alizarin than the purple. And we'll probably get some more serious red into that a little bit, but we want to capture what we've got here. So it's Barely open. We'll see some small amount of teeth. Yeah, we're starting to see her? Yeah. Now, she's going to look really bizarre until we do a final smoothing of skin tone. And also, uh, until we... Um, <laughs> I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre in my black. And I'm going to come get some white. And I'm going to just, this is never my favorite, but I'm going to apply some teeth in here. She's going to go um, Winnie for a second. Hang in with me. We'll get her out of the Winnie stage, but we got to get her to the Winnie stage to begin. So you see the Winnie. She's super duper Winnie, isn't she? That's okay. Because when we come back with this lip, it then tucks them back into the mouth. Let's pull an exaggerated fullness on the lower lip. Come back into the upper. Just barely. Just shaping these as I can. And then here's the little trick. You want them to look a little more realistic and not 
that focus. See how they're all the focus? You guys are noticing that they're all the focus? Get your black and a little bit of glazing medium. And you really want it to be just a small amount because you can overdo real fast. Come here from the side. And knock them back. See how I'm doing that? Yeah. You're going to knock them back. They're not bright. They're just there. And that's true of things like the whites of the eyes and stuff like that. You have to be real careful about what you've got going on. We need some dark color. So we've got some shadows where we know they are. That's how we get that kind of complicated, partially open mouth considered on a face. Believe it or not, this is just the anchor of that painting for what we actually do with the lip. Yep. But we won't get the um, cat out till next time. Taking a little bit of a dark value here. Getting those shadows going. And I think this is a good resting place. I'll get some pictures of this and you can kind of see where it's at. You want to have a highlight at the forehead. You want to make sure that the bridge of your nose is a little bit lighter. Then there's a shadow on this inside that leads up into the curve of the eye. Then you want to highlight the nostrils. You run a shadow underneath the nose. The mouth is halfway between the nose and the chin. Eyes are halfway between the forehead and the chin. And you'll notice that they're not that big. Right now we have them kind of an off-white. You can sort of barely see them. And they are an eye apart. We have kind of a little blushing but highlight at the shoulder. We've got a little bit of shadow here on the inside edge. Blushing here, a little bit of shadow here, shadow underneath, shadow under the fingers. We're not too worried about these because so much smoke is going over here. We don't want to just end ourselves to get that. And yeah, that's a lot of work to get to there, but that's why, you know, oh, I have one more thing I have to do to get here. I see it now. So sometimes when you step back, this is the other thing. You can take this even further than we're at today. It won't hurt you for next class. I just want to. Now, is zinc wanna... white the same as mixing white? Yeah. Okay. I mean, not like totally chemically, but for the purposes of what we're doing here, totally. Just wanted to make sure that that shadow was. Similar to the other shadow. So that's where you want to get her temperature around the front. Hey. All right. So she looks a little ghosty and scary at the moment, but by the time she's done, she's going to be stunning. She's going to be um, like our flower elf. Yeah. Is about where I expect her to finish. And so these little features, especially when you're doing portraiture and you're doing it small and you want it to kind of look like the figure, those can take a little minute. I'll make sure that those up close shots are for you so you can be like, all right, I'm just trying to get to here. Because what will happen to you at home probably is that your expectation will be to the fully resolved face, to the fully resolved features and everything and the fingers worked out completely when you're really two thirds of the way there. And we're going to be resolving the rest of that when we meet back next time. So all you're trying to do is get those highlighted values, get those shadow values, get some basic structure to the skin tone so you can start to see it. You know, take it if you want to keep smoothing it, if you want to keep working it, but remember to let it dry when it needs to dry and to work the glaze when you need to work the glaze. Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I will see you next week for the next big art quiz. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.